What's up and welcome to my guide to gamer sizing or exercising well gaming. I've got many years of experience with lots of different devices and lots of different methods and utilizing my passion for gaming paired with exercise equipment has tremendously helped me lose the weight and help keep that weight off. So today we're gonna to talk about all of these topics. We're gonna to talk about my weight loss story, calories in and out, basically how you can gain and lose weight, uh, picking a goal, setting up a system, the best ways of pairing passion with exercise, picking a treadmill, picking an adjustable desk, I'm gonna go over what I actually bought. There'll be links in the description to what I actually bought. Uh, tips for your best gaming setup and uh, tips for actually doing the gamer sizing because you can't just play any old game, most likely, unless you're extra special, spatially aware, uh, spatially coordinated. It's very hard to play some games well on a treadmill or on an elliptical. So I'm gonna talk about uh, my top 10 games that I recommend for gamer sizing. Uh, and then when to use a controller and of course, tips for walking shoes, which are super important if you're gonna spend, you know, over an hour every day on a treadmill. So starting off with my weight loss story, I used to weigh 293 pounds is what I, the highest I weighed in. I probably tipped the scales actually over 300 pounds at one point, but I may not have measured myself at that, the highest weight. But you can see I had a huge double chin. I was very much overweight. It was sad for me. Like I had trouble sleeping. I had trouble, uh, you know, I had like sleep apnea. I kept waking myself up. Um, you know, I had vomit in my throat from waking up in the middle of the night and it sucked. Uh, you know, going up and down stairs. I could no longer play sports. You know, back knee problems starting to come into play. It was terrible. This was probably about 280 pounds or so in this photo. Over the years, I've gradually been losing more and more weight and then putting on more and more muscle. And I'm gonna talk about uh, basically my journey here. So in this initial part, when I was losing weight, when I was the heaviest here, you know, I couldn't even get out on a basketball court. I couldn't even go do this hardcore exercise that I wanted to do. I used to play sports two to three hours uh, several times a week to keep myself fit and I could eat whatever I wanted. And then I got injured several times when playing sports and that basically prevented me from playing sports as much. And then my activity went down the, the chute and I kept eating all I wanted. And when you consume as much food as I was eating, I was probably eating three to 4,000 calories a day while not hardly exercising at all. I quickly put on over a hundred pounds of body fat during uh, like a two year period. It was very fast and it was very shocking to me. Like basically, you know, I woke up one day, I'm like, what happened to my body? And then getting it to actually come off was very, very difficult. And I failed for a while. The biggest and most important thing for losing weight and maintaining a healthy weight is calories in, calories out. So, you know, you need to burn more calories than you actually consume. And if you're doing that, you will slowly lose weight typically. Uh, the bigger the deficit of calories burned versus calories consumed, the faster you lose weight. Now you don't wanna go too far into consuming like nothing, um, but the system that I basically set up was I would restrict myself to around 1800 calories per day, was not perfect. Honestly, I probably was averaging closer to 1,900 or 2,000 calories because I kept going past my 1,800 calorie target. But then I was working out uh, or exercising, walker sizing, gamer sizing, um, probably two to three hours a day. And it, it basically, I was doing about 20,000 steps a day for a long time. And I would do that in a combination of audiobooks, video games on ellipticals and treadmills, uh, and then walking around my neighborhood, playing like mobile games on my smartphone, um, playing mobile games on my iPad, uh, playing strategy games on my iPad, set up on like ellipticals. Uh, I would basically, those were the primary ways in which I was burning calories in the initial starting phase of me losing weight. And then as I've gone into this maintenance phase, I have learned how to play full-fledged PC games well on a treadmill or an elliptical. So right, if you want to lose 100 pounds, then that's a fantastic goal, but just having the goal is not gonna get you there. You need to get a system in place that will help you along the way and help keep you consistent. Um, and the 
Two, more, two main things is restricting your calories. So you need to find healthier food alternatives, such as protein-centric milk, for example. Um, you can have protein smoothies, protein shakes, uh, You know, learning to eat the right categories of food, which means you need to buy the right things at the grocery store every week, uh, bring those better, higher quality foods into your life on a consistent basis so that you can restrict your calories. And at a certain point, you also have to learn to tell yourself no. Right? You have to be able to tell yourself, no, I'm not going to overeat, I'm not going to binge, I'm going to be healthy, I'm going to build a better lifestyle going into the future. And it can be very, very difficult. But one of the key things that can help you out, especially when you mess up on your diet, is having a lot of daily activity. Um, and there are a lot of factors into being able to have a lot of daily activity without hurting yourself. Obviously, talk to a doctor uh, if you have any health problems before you try to do anything like this. You got to get out there. You got to be active in some way. So what, what I did was I would have a system where I would walk in the morning for uh, like an hour. I'll go to the gym and walk on a treadmill or elliptical. I would play games. I would watch uh, shows on my phone or iPad. Um, I eventually did get an elliptical in my house and I'd have a TV there and I could either play video games on that TV while on the elliptical using a controller and a laptop hooked up to the TV. Or number two, I could watch shows on the TV that also worked really, really well. One of the systems that I set up was, you know, if I'm going to watch um, a lot of TV or play a lot of games, then why not? get my exercise in at the same time. So the key there really is deciding for yourself that when you game or when you watch TV, prioritize getting at least maybe an hour of walking in first, maybe two hours, depends on what you can do, right? If you're healthy enough to do two hours and that's, that's fantastic. Uh, it can be an amazing daily activity to up your caloric burn, um, especially if you have like an office or more of a sedentary type of job situation. Uh, obviously, if you're very active in your job, you, you may not want to do additional daily activity. You may want to do different types of daily activity, such as lifting weights um, or other types of exercising. But for me, I had a, primarily an office job for a while and then obviously YouTube. And both of those types of jobs are generally sitting on my butt like 90% of the time, at least. Having an additional way to get my daily activity was crucial for me to actually lose the weight and, and keep it off and consistently keep it off. So setting up that system of not only the foods you eat being improved, the quality of the foods, telling yourself no at the end of the day once you hit your calorie limit, uh, and number three, having the daily activity required to burn those calories and push that deficit a little bit uh, bigger so you have more of a weight loss potential uh, for a period of time. So when you're setting up your system, you're gonna wanna know two things for your calories. Number one, you wanna know what your basal metabolic rate, your BMR is, and it, it, this is basically how many calories your body burns without you doing anything in a day. Then you add how many daily active calories you are being active in addition to your BMR, and then that's your total calories burned in a day. So if your mine's around 2,200 calories from my BMR, plus if I walk for 1,000 calories in a day, then I've burned about 3,200 calories that day. So that's, if I want to maintain weight, I would do about 3,200 calories uh, intake. If I want to lose weight, then I'll want to eat under 3,200 calories. And so that's that's the essential. The most at, the, at its most basic core, that's the most important thing to know for gaining and losing weight. And setting up your system so that you can hit the right targets on a daily basis, that's the goal. And that's where gamer sizing comes into play. Um, you know, it's such an amazing feeling getting on a treadmill or an elliptical and going for an hour, two hours, having a great time playing games and then you, you it's like you blinked and boom you've, you've burned like 800 or a thousand calories walking for two hours it's fantastic okay so um let's talk about picking a treadmill um so first thing you want to do when you think about your treadmill is how fast do you want to walk are you a jogger are you a runner uh, and I think most people are gonna wanna walk from about 2.5 miles per hour to four miles per hour with the average being maybe around three to 3.2 miles per hour. Obviously it depends on how 
tall you are, how in shape you currently are. But in general, I'd recommend getting a treadmill that can go at least to four miles an hour. If you want to do jogging and running, which you can't really do when you're gaming, I don't think. I think a good steady walking pace is the best thing for gaming, which is usually you know, gonna be right around 3.2 miles per hour is what I have my treadmill typically set at. There is a lot of variance from treadmill to treadmill in terms of how much noise his treadmill produces, and it's hard, honestly, to get consistent testing data when it comes to treadmill noise. And I did go ahead and test how loud my treadmill was with my decibel meter, and I believe it was in the low 60s. So it is quite loud. Especially the faster you, you walk, the louder it'll be. But for the most part, I think around a 60 decibel mark is pretty reasonable if you want to listen to a loud television or you want to put on headphones and you won't really hear the treadmill anyway. Or if you, if you have loud speakers on your laptop, uh, for example, if I use the Blade 18 with a treadmill running at the same time. Now you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your weight limit on the treadmill is within specifications. If you weigh 300 pounds, you're gonna to have to get a bit of a beefier, stronger treadmill than the one I bought. The How High treadmill that I bought is only rated up to 265 pounds of weight. Now for controlling the treadmill, if you're gonna use an adjustable desk, I think it's very important to have a remote control that is hopefully wireless. Now for handrails, handrails can be handy if you're not gonna use an adjustable desk, but they can, like I said, be in the way if you're gonna use an adjustable desk. Now there are elevating treadmills, which basically can prop the front of the treadmill up giving you an incline, which will simulate very similar experience to hiking. And this can be great to increase your calorie burn uh, per hour on your treadmill. Getting even just a three or 5% inclination can really amp the difficulty and calorie burn. In my ideal world, I would want maybe a three or 5% inclination, just to give it a little bit more calorie burn. Um, if possible, but that's gonna obviously increase the price of the treadmill as well. Once you have picked your treadmill, you're gonna need to make sure that the height of your adjustable desk will, will work with it. Because if your treadmill is a tall treadmill, uh, you know, some of those treadmills can be like six inches or eight inches or 10 inches tall. Um, you know, and if you're gonna get a treadmill that really comes up, especially if it's an incline or elevation treadmill, you're gonna need to get a taller adjustable desk to, to match that, because you'll be standing at a higher height. Um, in addition, you're gonna wanna make sure that the width of the legs for the adjustable desk are wide enough to fit around the sides of, you really wanna make sure the desk's top is wide enough to handle everything that you want to put on the desk, which may be you know a laptop, external monitor, keyboard, mouse, and then a place to put snacks and a drink. Um, but you may just wanna have a laptop and keep nothing else on there. I don't know, uh, laptop and mouse is also fine too. So you, you can go with a very small adjustable desk depending on the space requirements. Um, and ideally, in addition, you're gonna want a very sturdy desk, uh, a desk that you can partially lean on when walking. And this is very important, anchoring your body. When you're playing games and you're walking on a treadmill, the key is you don't want to be moving forward and back on that treadmill, left and right. You wanna be staying in one spot on the treadmill so that you can be confident that you can just focus on your game. And the way to do that is to anchor your body to the treadmill in the same exact position by putting your palms on the desk uh, and or the belly touching the very front edge of the desk. So that way you know where you're positioned on the treadmill relative to the desk. So fundamentally, to be able to do that, you're gonna to need to get yourself a fairly sturdy desk to be able to handle at least a little bit of weight being put on top of it, and hopefully that way it's very stable. Now, if you want a super stable desk, really, what you want is like four metal legs, one in each corner. That's gonna give you the most stable experience, but four metal legs, is probably gonna be more expensive. You also ideally want a hardwood top, not a ply board top. A hardwood top is just gonna be firmer, more rigid, um, and hopefully just provide a more sturdy experience. The, the little mini desk, adjustable desk that I got, it is a plywood top and it is only two legs, but it's also still very inexpensive, coming in at under $130. So, uh, and it is motorized adjustable height desk. So I feel like it's good value for your money, 
but definitely not the top of the line, highest end. In addition, in ideal world, you want your adjustable desk to also have additional utility, such as a place you can put your headphones, uh, cable management, maybe a little basket where you can put your power adapter and power strip um, to keep the cables out of the way. Let's go ahead and take a look at the treadmill that I got. This is a how high treadmill. You can see it's got 4.4 stars with 220 ratings. I would not be surprised if some of these reviews are fake, um, but it does have a bearing weight of 265 pounds. This has a treadmill motor in the front. It can go up to 6.2 uh, miles per hour. It claims to be 45 decibels uh, or quieter, which is not at all what I tested it. Now, uh, there probably are some cheaper treadmills out there. Right now, this is priced at $209. I paid $158 for this. I don't know why it's $209 now. I don't know if it was just on sale or, or, or what, but um, but yeah, currently 209, and there's gonna be a lot of other options out there. If you just look up for walking treadmill, under desk treadmill, um, but the key things when you're looking at the treadmill is how wide is this treadmill? Um, how long is the treadmill? If you're a very tall person, you may want to get a little bit longer treadmill. This treadmill is just about perfect for me to have a full stride without touching the front or touching the back. Uh, so it's super comfortable for me. I'm about six feet tall, but if I was much taller, I feel like it might be a little bit short. Like if I was six foot four, six foot five, this treadmill probably would be a little bit short for that tall of a person. The other thing that you want to keep in mind with this treadmill, uh, is how wide it is. It's 24 inches across 52 inches long, and you can use the treadmill with the handrails up or down, which I really like about the how high uh, treadmill here. And the, the it also has a remote control that you can use for controlling the speed, going up and down, pausing uh, it, and playing it again, or starting it again, just with this power button. Um, if you want to wipe the stats on the tracker in the front, you actually have to turn the power button completely off on the treadmill and turn it back on in order to start fresh for each workout. There's no reset button. My impressions of the How High treadmill is that it is good enough quality. I've now done probably about 20 hours of walking on this in about a week and a half. So almost an hour and a half to two hours a day on it. I'd, one day I did over three hours of walking on it and it was no problem. It felt good to keep going the whole time. Now, next up is the adjustable desk I purchased. This one has a, a bunch of different colors, currently costs $129, um, and it has, I think, great functionality. We've got this uh, fairly thin plywood top, the, uh, the actual, um, the actual desk itself is 40 inches across the front. So a little bit more than three feet across the front, 22 inches deep, which is enough to have a laptop comfortably put on there, even with maybe an external keyboard and mouse. Uh, but it's gonna be uh, maybe a tighter fit if you're using like a big external monitor on here. So I don't know if I could recommend a big external monitor, but you can see a laptop uh, fits on this desk, no problem. There are some nice additional hangers on this. Uh, you got a hanger on the right and left side, as well as an under rack for holding on to your cables and power adapter. So you can help do some cable management and hide some of those extra cables, at least if you're gonna permanently be keeping the laptop on this desk for an extended period of time. You know, the little controller here allows you to set several different zones, four memory preset options for different heights, basically. Um, and you can also individually adjust the desk up and down. Overall, this desk, I think is tremendous value at $129. Uh, and so far, no problems at all, like a high quality desk. Now, in terms of its rigidity, I feel like this desk is fairly strong, but it's not as strong as the, the sturdiest desks out there, especially the four legged based desks. But typically adjustable desks of this size, at least, are only two legs. So maybe some more shopping around could provide a better option or just custom building a desk to be exactly the height that you need for this walking treadmill desk setup, maybe a better option if you want something super rigid and firm to help support you when playing games. 
The best gaming setups, I think, are likely going to be a gaming laptop. 16 to 18 inches in size, somewhere in that ballpark, at least 15, 14 inch. I did try using the Zephyrus G14 on there, and it's certainly possible to play with a 14 inch laptop, but I felt like a 16 or 18 inch just provided a more immersive experience, being able to see everything on the screen a little bit better because you are sitting a little bit further back walking on the treadmill while gaming. So having that additional screen size is quite nice. Now, when you're on the treadmill, you may build up static electricity. This is where a laptop that has a plastic chassis has an advantage over an all metal one. You might end up shocking yourself quite a bit on a metal chassis. If that's the case, then use an external keyboard and mouse or an external controller to prevent that from happening. There's a lot of different potential setups, including using a desktop PC. You don't have to use a laptop, but a laptop makes a lot of sense here. Now, I think having an external mouse is extremely important and preferably a wireless external mouse. I use the Logitech G305, uh, which works quite well. It's small, it's easy to use, uh, and it's got light speed technology for latency free um, gaming. And then in addition, I highly recommend picking up like an Xbox controller. This will pair to almost all of the recent gaming laptops that come out with Bluetooth 5.0 or higher. Uh, you just press this in and press the sync button and then you've boom you've got yourself a controller a high quality controller experience to where you don't have to be on the desk touching the desk the whole time and so that'll also help and so especially if you, if you walk for two hours you're going to get a little bit sweaty you may not want to actually have your hands on the keyboard the whole time uh sweat coming off your fingers that kind of thing um having the controller just provides the full gaming experience and you can kind of hold it like this with maybe your elbows on the table and you can game if you wanna be anchored or maybe just the, the bottoms of your hands sitting there on top of the desk and you can be anchored that way. Uh, or if you're very coordinated, you can obviously just sit back and walk on the treadmill completely independent of the desk uh, and game that way as well. Let's talk about picking the right game. I've got 10 potential game options slash recommendations. When you're gaming and exercising on an elliptical or a treadmill, I think being spatially in a 3D environment, getting immersed in the 3D environment, I have played a lot of those games. I've played Halo, I've played Apex Legends when on a treadmill on an elliptical, but I've found that when I'm in those 3D environments, moving, jumping, shooting, I'm so focused on the game, I can barely get my legs to work right, so, in general, I tend to recommend flatter, more two-dimensional type gaming experiences. And like I said, I've got a bunch of gaming recommendations, uh, but they may not be for everyone. You'll have to find whatever games you like uh, and find entertaining that you can actually still game with. My number one game right now recommendation is Baldur's Gate 3. Turn-based game, slower paced, but it's still a AAA gaming experience. You can also fully play Baldur's Gate 3 with a controller. Now the next couple games are auto battlers. Auto battlers are strategy games where you place units on a board and then they battle your opponent's team, much like a game of chess where the creatures come alive and start duking it out. So it's really great for an elliptical or treadmill type of experience. I've played a ton of Team Fight Tactics, another auto battler. Now the next game is Civilization VI. This is currently a $6 game on Steam. Uh, very cheap game to get, but it, you can sink just so many hours into Civ uh, games. You can easily be like past the time. If you're into strategy games, I think a turn-based strategy game like Civilization is amazing on an elliptical or a treadmill experience. Brotato is a, a rogue-like uh, shoot 'em up two-dimensional arcade game. It can be fantastic, very simple controls, so it's very easy to focus on staying on the treadmill while playing. Next up, we have Super Meat Boy, another 2D arcade game. Next up, we have Hearthstone, another game I have sunk well over a thousand hours into the gameplay of. Uh, you can easily play that game smoothly on a tablet experience or on a laptop experience uh, on an elliptical or a treadmill. There are many tower defense games that just make excellent gaming experiences when you're on an elliptical or a treadmill, such as Bloons TD6 or Bloons TD Battles 2, kind of a childish graphics, but a lot of strategy with those games. And they're, they really help pass the time if you'd like that type of game. Another type of game that I have personally 
done hundreds of hours on ellipticals and treadmills with is Black Desert Online, but this really applies to any type of grindy MMO or grindy games in general that are hopefully slower or medium pace or follow a more predictable pattern. I feel like those ones I can actually do when I'm sitting on a treadmill or elliptical compared to something like Halo or Apex Legends where everything's just super fast paced. All right, so the, the last tip I have for you is to get great walking shoes. It's very important to have enough cushion as well as enough arch support and to have a properly sized shoe. Like when I was overweight, uh, my feet actually got bigger. And as I lost weight, they also became leaner, right? And I had to change my shoes out. Uh, I went through so many pairs of shoes when I was walking outdoors. Like it just wears the tread off of the bottom of your shoe so quickly. And which this is one of the main reasons why I do prefer walking on a treadmill or an elliptical instead of walking outside. Having high quality walking shoes can make the biggest difference from being able to walk for an hour every day or from being injured. Last bonus tip that I'm gonna throw in here is slowly increasing your activity during the initial starting phase. You might wanna start with just 10 minutes of gamer sizing, play one match of a game, uh, and then that's it. Maybe that's all you can do, uh, depending on what your current weight and health uh, looks like. Uh, but build up, build up to being able to walk for that full hour on the regular. I mean, if you wanna have great results, consistency is key, consistency in what you eat and consistency in your daily activity levels and gamer sizing is probably the best way I've found to consistently exercise as much as I need to, to keep the weight off and to, to stay as healthy as I really want to be. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button and subscribe for more content surrounding gaming and gaming technology, primarily gaming laptop reviews, but of course I dabble in other types of tech as well. So that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Brandon out. Is out.